Yo, what's up, guys? I believe we are live on the internet. Uh, if you can hear us okay, uh, you can head over right now to theory11.com forward slash expose if you're not there already, and that's where you can participate in our chat room. So if you're watching this live on YouTube, you can head over, if this is live, if you're watching this in the future, uh, ignore what I'm saying, but welcome. This is our second expose live broadcast. I'm joined on this by Mr. Andre Jick. Andre, you there? What's up? Yep, what's up? Andre is here doing fancy moves as usual. Kristen Gerhardt. Hello. Hello. And uh, we have a uh, special guest, Jason England. I don't need to make it a big surprise. We're going to get to Jason later in this broadcast. If you guys can hear us and see us okay, can you post in the chat? So again, go to theory11.com forward slash expose. Uh, uh, theory11.com forward slash expose. That's where you can watch this live and comment and chat during it. We're going to be taking a lot of questions throughout the broadcast, especially towards the end of this with Jason England. I saw a few guys, a few of you guys that are uh, watching this from Black Sea, sunny north, about an hour away from Blackpool, uh, kind of all over the world. So thank you guys for uh, staying up late and watching this. If you aren't seeing this video live on the chat, uh, maybe refresh theory11.com forward slash expose. But I think we're all here. I see you guys can saying I can hear you. So we will begin. Welcome to expose. <laughs> Fancy logo. Hello. Yay. I think it's really weird that we're all so excited. <laughs> we're, we're excited that we have music playing. It's very high tech for us. We're, we're experimenting with this new chat system, which you guys are obviously seeing and using right now. If you're on uh, theory11.com forward slash expose, you can chat. I'm going to write something like, hey, uh, and you guys can chat, talk to us, submit questions during the broadcast. Uh, get some questions brewing for Jason England. He's going to be talking about Saparosa. Uh, it's Andre. Someone says, who's behind Andre? It may or may not be Jason. I don't know. It could be. Uh, I, could be. We don't even know. You don't even know. It would be we'll really weird if it isn't Jason. Then Andre. Yeah, it would be really it's creepy. Check that out. <laughs> it's not Jason. I have no <laughs> idea. Andre, don't look now. Why? Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna for this broadcast just like the last one will be about an hour long. Is what we're aiming for. I know a lot of you guys are staying up late for it, so we're gonna keep things snappy. Uh, we're gonna go through a few things first. Um, we're going to start with the news, what happened this week. Second, we are going to go over our new releases this week, some on The Wire and obviously Break and Sub Rosa on our side. And lastly, we are going to bring Jason England on to answer your questions and do a demonstration of Sub Rosa, some uh, concepts using Sub Rosa live for you guys and take your questions. Uh, first question I see is, yeah, 20 bucks, JB is not wearing any pants right now, and you are correct. <laughs> you are dead on. <laughs> This. Ignore the mirror behind me. Anyway, we are going to start. Uh, we're going to start off with the news. Uh, we'll let Kristen uh, take it away from here. Perfect. So a lot of the news we have recently comes from the Got Talent franchises. Fran fran franchises. Yeah. Uh, starting with Derek Hughes, who is on America's Got Talent, and it's probably one of my favorite like little performances that happened on the show. Um, it's. I don't want to give anything. I don't want to reveal too much. When you see it, that will be fun. Yeah, because he was revealing what he did. Yeah. Uh, no, he, he reveals more than just what he did. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it's well worth your time to check that clip out. Um, Penn and Teller have a new promo out for Fool Us, which will air on the CW on July 6th. I absolutely can't wait for that. I think they only wear the one, the one kind of suit in every TV performance they do, but I actually look forward to it. But Penn Same like suit. lost like uh, a <laughs> thousand pounds. Like, His suit is actually half of the original suit. Yeah, no, really, it's, it's incredible. It's, yeah, I re yeah, he, he lost. I think literally he lost one of me, a whole me. Yeah, or or like uh, one and a half of me because I'm like sixty-seven pounds and uh, yeah. He's riding a car seat. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a legal technicality, but yeah, I do. And then back to more of the Got Talent stuff. In Britain's Got Talent, Chloe Louise Crawford. She did not advance in the next round, but she did get really, really far in the competition. So girl props, also magician props. But uh, Jamie Raven finished. He finished second in the whole competition, which is first off absolutely incredible. But he did finish second to a tightroping dog. But I feel like if you're in a competition with a tightroping dog, you have a walking dog, you can't like it. 
you you just have to finish second. You know what I mean? Who wait? Was was this Derek Hughes? I was in the competition with Tyra Minogue. It was a different show. No, no, this is Britain's Got Talent. Oh, okay. Across Britain's the pond. Got yes. it. <laughs> but it's a tightrope walking dog. Like for real though? As we would say, not magic, but magical. It is. That is magical. I saw a video on YouTube of a, a dog that can do a handstand on um, a tightrope this week. That was in my spirit. I have a lot of people. Sure who, it wasn't me. Who thinks about that? Who goes, you know what I want to do? I want to teach a dog to handstand. I, uh, I thought you were going to say, who thinks to like look for that? And how did I find that and watch that? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, ooh, I want to find handstand. Yes, equally, equally amazing. <laughs> So that's that's about it right. for the magical news, and then we'll I'll throw it over to Andre for what up? So this week we have two new uh, releases on the wire. And the first one is, of course, by drumroll, Arnel Renegado, who releases uh, Reband, and you can make basically a knot on a rubber band visually and instantaneously disappear. So it looks pretty ridiculous. I want to show you guys the trailer for it real quick. Where is it? Right here. All right. Well, that was uh, Reband by uh, Arnell. And I think that's six ninety five on the wire. And the second release we have is by Sam Wheeler. And this guy puts out a lot of great work. I, I really like his style. And his most recent release on the wire is called Mousetrap. It's super elegant, uh, complex, two-handed cut, super smooth. So rather than describe it, I'll show it to you guys. Um, it looks like this. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? It looks cool. I, I like the last part of it. What kind of car is that in the background? What is it? I was just trying to figure out what kind of car is that in the background. Kristen would probably be the more have more expertise. In this I need another look. I can tell you. Well, it's cool because it's free. So go learn it right now. Nice. Both yeah. of those are free, or just the last one? Just the last one. The first one is six ninety five, and uh, Sam Wheeler's uh, Mousetrap is free. So I think it's really cool. Um, that said, uh, I have a few videos of my own that I have released this past week which uh, involve the Apple Watch, and it's just something I've been messing around with. Uh, it's really fun. It's kind of ridiculous. And here, let me show you one of the ones I did. Is, uh, the first one is Star Wars themed, so I'm combining Star Wars, doing a timed performance with cardistry to basically queuing up my Apple Watch, and I'm playing a music soundtrack that I basically edited in Premiere, uh, just sound effects that I downloaded from YouTube and made a you know 15 second clip out of it. So this is the first little skit that's Star Wars themed. Right, here it is. My Apple Watch does something pretty cool. Um, 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 um. I agree. Force is strong with this one. My favorite thing about so that's, that video that's the is the uh, shirt you're wearing. The JJ shirt, yeah, you can't miss that. So, <laughs> isn't that a shirt you got me, by the way? I, I think, think you got is. me that one. I believe it is. I do wear that shirt yeah. once a week. Yeah, yeah, and the second one, second one I released is uh, Super Mario, because uh, I love video games. And uh, here is the Super Mario skit. And again, this is just timed cardistry to the soundtrack that's queued up on the on the watch. The Apple Watch is so useful. My biggest question on these videos is how many times did you have to film these with like, where like the sound was a little bit off? Like was that like your 40th take or your 50th take? It and was like, take 200? Yeah, I would like to also <laughs> your neighbors like watching in the window. <laughs> Of like, who's this guy that's just dancing with cards by himself? <laughs> yeah. No, it was. It took a lot of takes to to do it. Um, and it's easier in real life, I think, just because on video everything has to be like so perfect 
But if you're doing this in real life, it doesn't have to be so perfect. Like people get the idea, and it's still funny nonetheless. But uh, yeah, so that that was the two I've released, and I have a third one that I have not yet released. I'm gonna post on Instagram right after Expose. I want to show so you guys that? a sneak peek here. What's up? I was uh, LB Mania says down, download your Apple Watch now from the wire. Yeah. <laughs> Apple Watch out of butt new effect yes. Apple Watch. Uh, yes, this is the same shirt. <laughs> Same shirt I'm wearing, yep, yep. Uh, all right, let me see. I don't have any more shirts. This is the only shirt I own, so I'm going to wear this for now forever. Um, okay, so here is the Bruce Lee one. This is my latest one, Bruce Lee with cardistry. Here it is. Apple Watch, Bruce Lee, initiate. <laughs> Apple Watch, Bruce Lee. Pretty ridiculous. Don't judge. Don't judge. It works. Oh my god, Jamie's having a little like moment. Ah, uh, the best thing about that. This is the first time I've actually seen Andre where he did not do sound effects from his mouth while he's performing hard. <laughs> because he had exactly. the round sound effects by his watch. Exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, it's a, a, a good Saturday Night Contest that you sound effects with cardistry or magic. Yeah, no, I, I've always wanted to have seen something like that from a magic perspective. Like, I wonder if there's any magic applications for having, like, sound effects on the watch without people's, kind of, without people knowing where it's coming from in a way. Maybe it's, like, a creepy way to, like, accent something, or, I don't know. I think there's something there, potentially. Can we watch uh, that video one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One sec. Just the see. screen part. <laughs> just the last part, honestly. Just the last, just the last. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't judge. Don't judge. Okay, here. We're not judging. We're we're Apple loving. Watch Bruce Lee initiate. <laughs> Apple. <laughs> it's so stupid. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yes, I do have too much time on my hands. Yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to uh, segue uh, from that. Uh, now, <laughs> so so you guys know we just recently released Break and Sub Rosa. So I want to show you guys the packaging for it because it's pretty awesome. Uh, here is the packaging for Break, the coin bend effect where you get to bend a coin and break it in half and then break the other half in half again. Uh, here it is. Really cool, fancy packaging. This whole box, by the way, as you guys know, there's no glue or anything. It's one whole tuck case, one piece of paper that is folded in this special way. And yeah, it's super cool. So anyway, this is what that looks like. And Sub Rosa is this. Bam. And it comes with this little invite for the uh, instructional video to the forum. I covered it up to uh, with a sticker seal from the Tycoon playing card so you don't see the password. But it's right there. Because that would be weird. Yes. So, anyway, that's the packaging for it. And uh, speaking of Sub Rosa, I actually have Jason England here with me to answer a bunch of you guys' questions because we got so many questions regarding if you can do this maybe standing up and you guys have a lot of... There was uh, a bazillion questions. Uh, I think it was like... Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, I think the root of it was, A, you know, we purposefully did not show an enormous amount in the preview video, admittedly. Uh, we said on the product page what this allows you to do and a little bit of the history of it, but uh, we left a lot of this a mystery and a secret because we want it to be a secret. Um, but you know, everything that we say on the product page is, is correct. Uh, this is something that allows you to control the cards in a seemingly impossible test conditions. The spectator can examine the deck, they can shuffle the deck, and you can control uh, a single card or multiple cards. Um, as you wish. Uh, this is something you guys can apply to virtually anyone that does card magic, especially card magic on a surface. So uh, since we did get so many questions, we wanted to bring Jason England uh, here today, not only just talk about this a little bit without revealing it, uh, but giving you guys a little bit more insight on what Sub Rosa is um, and also what it isn't, and, uh, and then obviously to do a demonstration for you guys of showing some stuff that you can do, some cool things on a simple side and also maybe on the more complex side of what you can do with this. So, uh, Jason, can you, if you can hear me okay first, uh, uh, we're going to be taking questions during the chat uh, in, in, in a few moments, but to start things off, can you tell us a little bit about what Sub Rosa is? No. Thank you. It was great to see you today. Um, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> 
uh, what Sub Rosa is. Well, Sub Rosa is uh, an old method. And when I say old, I'm not sure how old it is. Um, we know it's at least 100 years old, and that's probably being very conservative. It may be uh, two or 300 years old. The truth is we just don't know. But it is a very old method of controlling uh, a playing card or a group of playing cards in uh, an otherwise normal deck of cards. Um, you do something to the cards that you want to control, and once you do that, they are pretty much under your control at all times, or, or not, not at all times, that's the wrong turn of phrase, at any time that you want. Um, you just have to be able to get the deck and, and uh, shuffle it or cut it, um, and those cards are under control. Uh, apparently, shuffle it or cut it is what I should say, probably. So... Um, that's, I know that's kind of cryptic. I'm not exactly um, saying exactly what it is because we don't want to give that away. Uh, we want to respect the people that have, uh, that have bought it a little bit. But that's essentially it. Anyone that's bought it will know exactly what I'm talking about. But that's what it does. Yeah, so we, the, I'm just trying to recap in my head. Uh, we'll obviously answer the questions you guys are posting in the chat. I saw a question that was earlier um, from Jack of Spades. He was saying, is Sub Rosa something that's suitable for a stand-up performance? Like when you're standing up, uh, or do you have to be seated? Like if, can, if, as long as you have a surface, can you perform this standing up, or does that have to be seated? Are there angle issues with this? Um, anything else you can uh -huh. enlighten us with on that? It can absolutely be done standing up. I will tell you that it wasn't designed to be done standing up because it comes from the card table where they're playing cards. You know, you show me a game that doesn't involve a card table in some way. Um, but because it comes from a card table, it was designed to be done sitting down. However, um, I heard this question a couple of days ago. I think uh, you asked me and then Andre asked me again when I came into the studio today, can this be done standing? And the answer is absolutely yes. It can be done standing. I don't do it standing, and so if I try to do it here, it, it might not work for you uh, or might not work for me. But the only reason I can't do it standing is because I haven't practiced trying to do it standing. I always, uh, I always do this move while I'm apparently shuffling or cutting on a, on a table. But it can be done standing because I tried it, and it worked uh, you know, 20% of the time, and that was with zero practice whatsoever. So if you practiced it, could you do this standing up completely away from a table? Um, my answer is absolutely you could. Um, however, it really shines when you disguise it as either a cut or a riffle shuffle on the table. And that's um, when it becomes invisible, um, it's, and it's they've just got no chance. Yeah, there's a lot of questions here about, like, you know, there's a question. Let me scroll up in the chat a little bit. You guys can keep your questions coming in or reading all these stuff as it comes. Uh, Sebastian saying, does Sub Rosa require a gimmick? Because a lot of people, they read on the product page for this, it says includes, you know, the, the professionally engineered decks that enable you to do this. This is, uh, it, it does require something that we're sending them, these special decks. But at the same time, they don't, it, well, two things. One, Am I correct that they can use these decks with any other trick basically that they do already in their card magic routine? And two, they don't have to use the decks that we give them. We teach them in the video of Sub Rosa how you can make your own decks. So for example, if you only use yep. uh, Monarchs, you can apply this to whatever deck you already like to use. We just wanted to give you these professionally made decks so that you're learning with things that are, you know, decks that are flawlessly, professionally done. If you choose to go make your own thereafter, you know, that's 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 absolutely encouraged and it's something that we teach you in the in the video. Yeah, um, you know, we could have made this a product that was only a teaching video that taught everyone how to how to make their own things. Uh, in fact, we talked about doing that early on, um, but I know that a lot of people aren't good at making things on their own or are just often like me, just too lazy to make things on my own. You know, I'm well aware of how to make my own invisible decks. Um, you lay out all the cards in pairs, and you spray the backs of them it's with better. roughing fluid, and you let it dry overnight, and, you know, who's got time for that? So I go to the magic shop, and I buy an invisible deck for 10 bucks, um, and I just skip that whole part about making it myself, and I know that someone's done it right. So that's why we decided to include a couple of decks of cards is for those people out there that go, eh, sounds neat, but I'm not going to be bothered to make that myself. 
um, these people can still play. Um, however, I think that once you see the, uh, the video where we absolutely teach you how to make it yourself, uh, you will realize that this is an incredibly powerful tool. Uh, the deck of cards that I'm holding in my hands right here, I took off, uh, off the shelf here at Andre's and uh, made it while he was talking. Uh, so I started making it when Andre started, uh, when you guys went live, and I finished before uh, I sat down, um, and it's perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. I started you know, sitting on the couch. I made this deck in, I don't know, three minutes, something like that. And the beauty of it is that you can do this in a variety of different ways. And I'm trying to kind of talk around what it is so that uh, we protect it for people that uh, have purchased it. Um, but, you know, you can walk into any drugstore in the world and walk out um, with a deck of cards and having bought one other thing that costs a dollar and you have everything you need to make your own Sub Rosa deck, which we fully explain on the video, you can use that deck in a show, and then you can leave it with a spectator. Uh, and as long as they're not a magician, you're perfectly safe. They're never going to find anything. Um, and I've got decks of cards at my dad's house in Tennessee, at my mom's house, at friends' houses that aren't magicians where I made this up, and I used it, and I told them, here, keep this deck of cards. I'll show you something else when I come back. And they throw it in a drawer, and two or three years will go by, and I'll wind up at that friend's house, and he'll say, hey, show me something. I go, oh, yeah, you got that deck of cards? And they'll go dig it out of a drawer somewhere and toss it to me, and it takes me two seconds to check and see if it's the same deck of cards that I left with them or if they've just somehow come up with a different deck of cards. But either way, um, I was confident leaving this gaffed deck of cards that I gaffed myself. Um, I was confident leaving it with them. They can play cards with it uh, all day long, and they're never going to find anything. Uh, again, as long as they're not a magician. Now, if it's another magician, you do have to be a little careful because they might notice something. But, um, but that's one of the beautiful things about uh, this concept is that if you put the work in light enough, you practice where you can use really light work, you put the work in light enough, even other magicians could handle your cards and not know that the Sub Rosa work was in the deck. Now, the smart ones could probably figure it out, but the guys that don't know about this, it'll go right over them. And I think that's a beautiful thing. So um, I hope that's encouraged those of you that might have been on the fence to, uh, to look into this. But uh, it's a very, very cool, uh, very cool thing. One of the reasons why no one's talked about it for 100 years. Um, I saw one no, question no, here. Just go ahead, Kristen. Sorry. Now, a couple people were asking, actually, do you need to know any sleight of hand moves in order to perform this trick or the one trick? Uh, it helps. Um, do you have to know any? Well, uh, I'll tell you what Sub Rosa does. Sub Rosa obviates, that means gets rid of the necessity for, obviates a call. It so obviates. how many tricks obviates? <laughs> you just hearing what you want to hear, JB. <laughs> um, how many tricks in Magic start off like this? Get four aces to the top of the deck. A million? I don't know. I mean, lots of them start off, get four aces to the top of the deck, or get the four kings to the bottom of the deck, or something like that. Get a red ace on top and a red ace on bottom. You know, so many tricks in Magic start like that. And the way most magicians do them is they go, oh, here, let me show you one. And now I'm ready because I've done a call and I've called the four aces to the top of the deck. And what Sub Rosa allows you to do is it allows you to do the exact same trick, but you start like this. Here, shuffle these cards for me. Take the deck back. I'll give them one last shuffle because uh, I don't trust you. And now you're ready to go. The four aces are already on top of the deck. Um, could you do that with sleight of hand? Sure, you could palm out four aces before the show begins, do a bunch of tricks without the aces in the deck, and then sneak them back in later. There's ways around it, but the beauty of this is, is when you hand them the deck, the aces are in there, or the kings are in there, or whatever cards you want, they're in the deck. They could look through it, they could count them, all the cards are there. Then they shuffle, then they hand it back to you. You give it a cut, maybe another riffle shuffle, and you're off to the races. Your four aces are on top, or your four kings are on bottom, or you've called some random cards up to the top that you know you're going to want to use. 
there's a lot of things you can do with this, but we skipped over the ugly part. The ugly part is where the magician goes, hang on a second, hang on a second, hang on. Okay, now I'm ready to show you a trick. We skipped over that part. Um, we skipped over the part where you had to cull the cards. And to me, that's a, that's a huge thing for something that once you've learned it, you can do anytime, anywhere with any deck of cards. That's huge. Someone's asking, do you ever gaff the aces so you know which ace uh, you can, you know, control? Are you able, with Subrose, I guess he's asking, are you able to make it so that you make the aces appear in the specific sequence that you want? Like you want to make the ace of hearts, then the diamonds and the clubs and the spades in a specific order after a series of very fair shuffles? Um, I will tell you that is possible. Uh, I will not tell you that you're going to learn that from our video. Um, however, yes, that can be done by applying the techniques that you learn on the video in a, in a certain way. So, uh, yes, it can be done. Uh, and sometimes it may be like uh, it is absolutely possible to take a deck of cards and say, after one shuffle, boom, the two red aces are on top. I don't know the order, but the two red aces are on top, and then I'll give the cards another shuffle, and now the two black aces are on top of the two red aces. And again, I wouldn't necessarily know the order of the, uh, of the two black aces. I wouldn't know if the spade came first or second. I wouldn't know if the heart came first or second. But I could know that the two black aces are on top and then the two red aces. But if you want to do those things, and it's possible to do, I've done this before, where I was interested in the order, and I got the four aces to the top of the deck, and then I just did a high riffle shuffle. And I'm just peeking right into the uh, right into the sequence, and now I can tell if the ace I want is on top, or if I need to adjust it a little bit, or what have you. Uh, so there's ways to get to those positions, but no, you don't normally know what order they are on top of the deck. Um, but I can already, you know, the wheels are turning in my head, and I'm already thinking of a way where you could hand the deck to someone and say, give it a couple of riffle shuffles, take it back, and then in, in one cut or one shuffle, you would absolutely know the order of the aces. So, again, it all kind of depends on the specific situation. Um, so my answer is it's usually not going to happen, but if you wanted to force it to happen, yes, you could do it. Um, looking through some more questions. You guys have a lot of questions coming in. Let's see here. A lot of people are asking if you've ever been caught doing this. Uh, only by other magicians. And even that may be maybe three times in 25 years where someone has said, I think I know what's going on here. And they were right. You know, I've had lots of people guess and be wrong at tricks that I've done, but only maybe two or three times in my whole life where I did this for someone that was familiar with the concept and I just didn't know they were familiar with the concept. Um, and most of the time, they were hedging their bets when they guessed. They were like, did you do this? And you could tell they weren't sure. And I said, yeah, you're right. You, you, you picked it off. Good job. And then we had a nice conversation about it. But uh, it doesn't happen very often because Typically, you're going to know immediately if someone is hip to what's going on or not. So three times in 25 years is, is a pretty good uh, Pretty, pretty good How, yeah, how long have you actually especially been... cons It's not bad considering how often I'm around amateur magicians, you know. I go to conventions. I hang out at the Magic Castle. Uh, I lived just a couple hours north of the castle for eight years, and so I was down there quite a bit. So, yeah, that's not bad considering how often I am around amateur magicians. Uh, I've been doing this for, I would say I've been really using it for about 20 years. I would have to go back and look at my notes and find out exactly when I started using it. I knew about it um, before that. Uh, I was actually uh, fooled with this technique by two different people. Uh, and I won't say their names because they're still using this, and I don't know if they want their name out there or not. So I was fooled by two different people with this, and then... Um, it was explained to me in, well, it was explained to me before uh, before November 7th, 1991, I'll tell you that, um, because it was explained to me by Ed Marlowe, first in a letter and then in a phone conversation after that. And Marlowe died in November 7th, 1991. So I learned it sometime before then. I knew what it was, and I was fooling around with it. And then I kind of set it aside, and I think the reason I set it aside is because it was more powerful than I needed at the time. You know, I was just doing magic for 
for friends that um, I had other ways to accomplish what Sub Rosa does now. Now I like the challenge aspect that Sub Rosa allows me to incorporate into my magic. I like knowing that I can respond when somebody says, well, I'm a Hold'em player. Can you give the deck two shuffles and give yourself pocket aces? Yes, I can. Here you go, sir. Shuffle these cards. Um, I like the fact that Sub Rosa allows for stuff like that. Um, back then, I wouldn't have necessarily had the confidence to respond to a challenge-style performance like that. Um, and, and even if I had had the confidence to, uh, to respond to it, I might have just done something else, like held out a couple of aces and let the guy shuffle the cards. So uh, Sub Rosa just opens up many, many, many options for you. Um, What's the difference between this and um, like a normal stripper deck or um, another deck you can use for control? What makes the rules this when is, when is the last time you made a stripper deck in three minutes? Sure. I do that all the time. You've got to cut 52 cards. You've got to re-round 52 corners. If you're smart, you'll re-round all the corners so that they all match. So you're re-rounding 200 and something, 208 corners, and you've cut 52 cards, and all the cards have to be turned the, the right way before you begin, and you can't leave it with a spectator. And if you bought it, it costs you know, 10 or $12. Um, that's a normal stripper deck. And what this does is I walk into the drugstore with nothing. I walk out with a deck of cards in one hand and a thing in the other hand. And three minutes later, I can do 99% of what you could do with your stripper deck, I can do. And I can leave them with the deck of cards at the end. And all the gaffs are in there. I'm not, I'm not taking the gaffs out and leaving them with just the rest of the deck. The gaffs are still in there. They're not going to find them if your work mm -hmm. is fine enough. Now, if you put the work in so hard that, um, you know, you can see it from across the street, that's a different story. But you will eventually get to the point where, and when I say eventually, I don't mean 20 years later. I mean in, inside of six months, you can get this to the point where um, you could leave it with almost anybody that's not a magician. Um, if you guys are set up for it, I don't know, um, Andre, if, if you're ready on Jason's side, if Jason, can, you can give us a, a brief demo of maybe the most elementary uh, application using Sub Rosa? Um, I can try. I'm not exactly sure how... I'm not exactly sure how to make this look like I didn't fake it. You know, so you just kind of have to take my word for it that I didn't fake it, you know. In, in other words, you might think, well, he had just had four aces on top of the deck the whole time. I promise I don't. So maybe we can do this. We'll give it a shot. Uh, if Andre can go to the other computer. Here we go. All right, so we see... Uh, the, yeah, see the cards. See a there ribbon spread of cards. Yeah. There's an ace here. There's an ace here. There's an ace here. There's an ace here. No other aces in the deck. This is uh, Andre's uh, deck... That, that I just that I just picked up off the table. Now I'm going to do this. I think we would all agree that this is a riffle shuffle. None of that fancy push through or zero stuff for me. That's a riffle shuffle. That's another riffle shuffle. And here's something you can't do with a stripper deck. You can't turn half of them around and shuffle them together like that. You know. That's a riffle shuffle. I don't know where in the deck those aces are now. And I, I really don't. I have no idea where they are. Except that they're all right there. Now then, that's not a magic trick. That's just a demo for those of you sitting at home. I would never do that for a lay audience because I think they would in initially suspect the deck. But instead of spreading them out and saying, ta-da, I'm smarter than you. What if I had just blended that into a, a series of cuts, false cuts, and then one last shuffle? And now I've got my four aces on top of the deck. I'm ready to go with any trick in magic that requires four aces on top of the deck. That's the power of Sub Rosa, is that I eliminated the call. Well, actually, I didn't eliminate it. I, I did a call of a sort, but with a completely different technique. I, you know, I still got my four aces to the top, which is what a call achieves. But I did it with a technique that 
um, you just can't achieve any other way. So that's one of the uh, one of the powerful things, in my opinion, of Sub Rosa. So basically, allowing you to the aces are actually dispersed throughout the deck. The aces are actually shuffled. Yep. Uh, you don't have any extra aces. Just to clear up, like what the normal methods for doing what you just did would have been. It's none of those things. Correct. Now, can you go on to use this deck for other effects in your team? Yeah, this would be the only deck of cards I would use for a whole show. And you com that's the beauty of it, is you completely ignore the Sub Rosa principle, which, uh, by the way, is not the historic name. That's just a name that JB and I came up with to, uh, to not say the real name of what this is. Um, but, uh, but you can still use this principle or ignore it whenever you feel like it. doesn't matter. That's the beauty of it. Can you do that same sequence? Someone, so, so the aces right now are on the bottom of the deck. Uh, well, one of them is, but I don't know where there's one. There's one. And there's one way down at the bottom of the face-up deck. I don't know if you can see it there. So they're just in there wherever. Uh, some, someone is asking, Jason, do you have to turn the other half of uh, the deck around when you shuffle the cards like you do in the preview video or like you did originally. Can you do it again without that, perhaps? Absolutely. I, I do it just to prove to people that it's not a stripper deck. It's not a wedge stripper deck like you would find in a magic shop. Uh, but you don't have to do it at all. It, it, in fact, it does absolutely nothing. Uh, but, it, but people that know about wedge stripper decks, which is the kind of stripper deck you find in a magic shop, they know, some of them have had a stripper deck when they were a kid, and they know that if you take a card and spin it around and push it into the deck, that you can slide it out one end because one end's wider than the other. Well, that's not the case with this deck. Um, so that's the beauty of it is that you can give it a bunch of normal shuffles but if someone turns half of it around, it's not going to mess you up. That's the beautiful, one of the beautiful things about uh, about this principle. I don't know where those cards are, or aces, but there's one. There's one. And there's two of them together right down near the bottom of the deck. Uh, the two red aces are together. Uh, but just to show you what you can do with, with uh, the Sub Rosa principle, there's three of them. And the other one was way down near the bottom, right about there. <laughs> I don't know how good the camera quality is here, and I don't know how good my fingers are today, but if you wanted kings, you can get those guys out too. Yeah, I can see that. That was, that was, that looked yeah, great. There's, there's nothing you can do with this. Uh, you know, this has no application to magic or anything like that. I mean, give me a break. This is like every card guy's dream. Anytime I want aces, boom, there they are. Anytime I want kings, boom, there they are. The spectator can, you know, handle the deck, shuffle the deck, deal the deck. He can do all of that stuff. He's going to find nothing. But you're in control whenever you want to be in control. Um, I mean, this is an unbelievably powerful tool, and the beauty of it is you turn it on and off whenever you feel like it. You know? Someone's asking. And there's like a reason that Vernon never mentioned it in print in any way that made any sense. He actually did mention it in print, but he, they left out the good stuff. If you read about uh, bathroom strippers, Di Vernon talked about bathroom strippers in uh, one of his books. I don't think it's in the uh, Chronicles. I think it's in um, one of the uh, Inner Secrets trilogy books. You could look it up online. Um, this is what he was talking about. But he completely left out the method, completely. He just mentions, oh, you can go on the bathroom and grab a piece of broken glass and make a stripper deck. And he completely left out that this is what he was really talking about. And it wasn't until the, uh, the Servon notebooks came out um, a few years ago when they finally revealed that this is what Vernon was talking about. So uh, Ed Marlowe wrote about these uh, types of cards in uh, Marlowe Magazine number five. He gives it like, you know, three paragraphs doesn't describe any of the stuff I just showed you. He talked about a few other things you could do with it. Uh, Charlie, Min Charlie Miller never breathed a word of it. He was certainly familiar with it. Um, it's very hard to find. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's very hard to find this type of stuff um, in print. Um, there have been, you know, Steve Forty talked about them in Poker Protection. Um, 
David Malik mentions them on his video, his fantastic video on uh, uh, protecting yourself against cheating at Hold'em. He produced a terrific video, and he mentions these, but he doesn't really teach you uh, how to get at them. He just explains that they're out there. Um, so other people have sort of danced around the subject over the years, but it wasn't until we found out that um, somebody else was working on this that I didn't uh, feel like um, was going to do it justice that that's when we decided to go ahead and put it out. There's a few questions of it's been posted by like three different people, so I thought we just we should take this and address it. Same. Sure, absolutely. Uh, did someone, did someone use, uh, was was Subrosa the method used to perform the infamous Scarney's Aces? Uh, you know, that's a great question, and I have long suspected that it might be the case. Um, nobody knows because, as far as as far as I know, you know, Scarney never really tipped how he did the Scarney's Aces that's written up in his biography. Uh, I know Carl Fulvis says he published the method to Scarney's Aces in uh, one of his books. Um, but I don't know. I mean, that's the short answer. I don't know if this is what John Scarney really used or not. I suspect that it might have been. Clearly, Scarney would have known about this. There's no question about that. Um, so it absolutely could have been. I can tell you that this is not what Bill Malone did. Um, I can tell you that, but I can't tell you anything else. Um, guys, just a status update. We've got a few more minutes here. We're going to keep going, but uh, any final questions you guys have, post in the chat room. We'll take a few more. Jason, is there another uh, any other anything else you want to demonstrate using this concept or? Is that all we're going to show people on this today? There's nothing I really need to demonstrate. I can tell you a couple things that if you've already bought this that you might not have considered yet. Um, now, some of you may have heard that there are companies out there that produce um, their own decks of cards with different kinds of back designs like this. What? Um, I won't mention any names, but believe it or not, there are people out there printing up their own playing cards. So these days, this is a little harder. But back in the good old days, when there was only two decks of cards to be found, you had bicycles and you had tally hoes for the most part. You had blue uh, bicycles. Nobody, nobody bothered with bees. Uh, back in those days, I used to carry around in a little wallet with me, just like a packet trick wallet. I had a, a set of red aces, a set of blue aces in bicycle, and a set of red aces and a set of blue aces in tally ho. I just carried them around with me when I'd go to the Magic Capital or Magic Conventions or stuff like that. And invariably, someone would say, hey, show me a trick. And I would just happen to look down and see what um, deck of cards they were using. And I would get those aces out of my pocket, um, or out of the wallet, and leave them in my pocket. So they're loose in my pocket. So um, they'd say, show me a trick. And I'd say, oh, sure. And I'd pick up the deck, and I'd go through it, and I would call their four aces to the top of the deck. And then I would do some trick that didn't use the four aces, okay? So it doesn't matter what it is. Then I would hand them their deck back, but I would palm off their four aces and go into my pocket as I hand them the deck back, go into the, my pocket and switch their four aces for my four aces that were the same color. And then I would come out and I would spread them and I'd say, you know, here, you forgot these. Now, and remember, these are magicians I'm doing this for. So usually they saw me palm the aces, you know, even if I did it well, you know, another magician can often just spot that. So they saw me palm the aces and they see the little gag about, oh, here, you forgot these, and it got a little chuckle or it got a smile or they were being polite or whatever. And they had no idea that what I had really done was set them up for later um, because now they have uh, aces in their deck of cards that will behave perfectly normally for them. Um, as long as they're not aware that, that they're in there. And they can shuffle and cut and they can do the rest of their, um, the, you know, the rest of their tricks for their friends all night long. And then later in the evening, an hour or two later, I would find them and uh, engage them in conversation and say, uh, here, let me show you one more thing. Get your, get your cards out. Give, give them a shuffle while you're at it. And now they're so screwed it's not even funny because they would never put two and two together and they never realized that I did the dirty work an hour or days before and then I put it into their deck an hour before I talked to them and I would beat them with something and then now all I've got to do is 
I have a choice. I can leave the aces in their deck. Uh, they'll probably never find it and just uh, throw the deck away when they get home. Or I can do some other switch or, uh, or trick to get them back out again. And um, I, I can't tell you how many guys I fooled with this. There may be people watching right now that are sitting there going, I'll be, you know, he, he, uh, he did that to me 10 years ago or whatever. So that's just one thing that you can do with them. Um, uh, or, or one way that you can approach this. So if, you, if you've got a friend that you know only uses artisans, first of all, slap him. Um, but secondly, um, you know, gaff up, gaff up some artisans and beat his brains out with these things the next time you see him. You know, that's, uh, that's what it's for. Someone's asking here if, if you can show us, uh, I know you did the, the four ace demonstration, even four kings as well. Is there an actual magic performance demonstration you can do of Sub Rosa uh, before we go here? No, because Sub Rosa is not a magic trick. Can you use this in the context of a magic trick? Or, it's like there was a question earlier. You know, sure, you want to see the invisible palm? Do you want to see the travelers? You know, um, any trick that requires... Uh, four aces on top of the deck you can do so all I would do is do a cutting the aces for you um, I don't know I don't really know what that would serve apart from doing a card trick for someone if you just want me to see it do a card trick I'll do something other than that <laughs> <laughs> you know so it's it's pointless to to talk about what you can do with sub Rosa you can do with Sub Rosa any card trick in Magic that requires you to begin with a certain set of cards on top of the deck. How That's quick, what you can do with it. Uh, Shikabi08, how quick is the setup for this? Can you perform it off the cuff after someone is requested, or do you have some setup? You could go off in a side room for a minute to set up like you have to do with many gap decks and things that people might be used to. Well, it depends. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you the way I've often used this. Um, I have literally, I, I didn't do this on purpose, by the way, but I literally got off the plane uh, going to a show once, and my bags didn't make it. So I did not have um, anything in my pockets, uh, and didn't even have a deck of cards that was worthwhile. Uh, did not have a deck of cards in my pockets or in my bag or anything. My bags didn't make it, and I was worried they wouldn't make it before the show started. So I went to a drugstore. I bought three or four decks of cards, different types, you know, a B deck and a bicycle deck, a couple bicycle decks, what have you. And I bought the thing that you need to make this. And I went to my hotel room and I did something which I often do. Andre, will you hand me that box over there? This is something, this is separate from Sub Rosa, but you guys will get a kick out of this, I think. Thank you. I opened the box from the bottom. And I don't try to be sneaky with this. I usually cut it with a little razor blade and just throw the bottom away. But now you can slide the cellophane off, except that that little pull tab is still at the top if you open it from the bottom. So I didn't do it with this deck. But imagine that pull tab is at the top. You slide the cellophane off and you set it aside. And then I break the seal. I don't try to get sneaky. I just break it cleanly. I opened up the deck, took the cards out. I put the work in in probably three minutes for each deck, put the deck back in the box in new deck order still, close the box up, turn the cellophane around, and slid the cellophane back down over the box. Okay, So now I go to my show with what looks like a sealed deck of cards. And I don't come out and say, look, here I have a sealed deck of cards. And you can tell it's never been tampered with. If you say things like that, people just get suspicious that maybe you're not telling the truth. So I come out and I sit down and I peel off that thing and I set it aside and I crack the seal. I pretend to crack the seal. You just run your thumb down it again, pretend to crack the seal, open it up, take the deck out, uh, crumble up the cellophane and set it aside so you destroy all the dirty work, remove the advertising cards and the joker, and I did a 30-minute, you know, 25, 30-minute magic set. And I used the Sub Rosa principle, I think, in one trick in that entire set. And, uh, and that's it. But everyone there believed that I had shown up, opened a deck of cards, and done a show. That was it. And it took about, you know, including tearing the box open and all that, probably five minutes up in my hotel room before the show. 
Could I have done it in the bathroom during the show? You know, if you're just hanging out with friends, you know, you're at a restaurant, you're eating, you go, hey, let me run to the restroom real quick. Yes, absolutely. Take you about three minutes. You know, um, maybe less than that. You, you know, the, the better at this, the better at this you are, the faster and the lighter you can put the work in. I personally know of a guy that'll steal a card from you, go under the table, hit it in about four seconds, and come back up and sneak that card back into your deck, and now he uses it as a key card. He doesn't do four aces like this. He uses it as a key card, and, um, um, and that's something yeah. very, very powerful. Yesterday we were on the phone and we were talking about using this in, con in concert with um, actual other moves that you've taught, for example, the second deal, bottom deal, Greek deal, and things of that nature. If, if someone is proficient in other sleight of hand moves, uh, is there some sort of brief demo you can show us of using this in combination with actual other other moves? So not something that's not reliant entirely on Sephirosa, but using this in concert with other things you already have learned and practiced. Sure. Um, now. Just understand that what you're about to see, I'll give you this, which is hard, no question about it, it's difficult to do, but then I'll give you something that's easy to do, I'll, I won't do it I'll, because I'm not set up for it, but I'll explain it, and those of you that have Sub Rosa, or if you're going to get it in the next uh, week or so, you'll understand uh, how to use this. So uh, imagine, first of all, we need to go back to, uh, we need yeah, to, go back to the back demo to camera. Yep, yeah, so Andre's coming over right now to do that. Okay. Bingo. I see hands. Perfect. So imagine that this is a, a shuffle deck of cards that's been handed to you by the uh, spectator. You give it a couple of apparent uh, strips and shuffles, if you like, whatever you want, and you bring up the topic of Hold'em. Okay, Hold'em poker is all the rage um, in the U.S. anyway, and it's getting more and more popular in the rest of the world as well. You ask someone, have you ever played Hold'em? And you, most people say yes. A couple people say no, but there's usually someone in the audience that says, sure, I've played. And you say, do you happen to know the best possible starting hand in Hold'em? And sometimes they know the answer, sometimes they don't. But the answer is two aces. If you could start your hand with two aces, Every time, um, it'd be a monster. A uh, deuce and a three of different suits, not a very strong hand. But if you could start with two aces every time, that would be a fantastic starting hand. Now, it just so happens that when I was doing these uh, cuts and shuffles, I actually got the aces up to the top of the deck. So the audience doesn't know that, but I've got all four aces on top of the deck already. And I'm just talking to them. I've not once looked through this deck since they've shuffled it. And I say... Um, how many people in our Hold'em game? How many people would you like? Do you want um, three? Uh, do you want th okay? Well, I was just about to say, do you want a low number like three? Do you want a high number like seven or eight? You know, what do you want? Let's go with three. Three people. Watch this. I'm going to give the deck a shuffle like so, and I believe I have stacked this deck for three hands. It should look something like that. That'll be my hand right there. Okay. Now then, you also, in Hold'em, you have a burn card where you set a card aside, and then you have something known as a flop. So there's our flop. Let's see what we've got. Oh, we've got an ace, a 10, and a 2. And then you've got another burn card, and you've got what they call the turn, and then you've got another burn card, and you've got what they call the river. Uh, looks like uh, the best possible hand here would be, well, four aces would be the best possible hand. What do you know? That's what I've got. What a coincidence. What a coincidence, yeah. So now what I just did is not easy. It uses second deals and bottom deals, um, but you can scale this if you only know second deals. You can still do part of this. It's not that hard. And I'll show you how it works. I don't mind giving this away because it's so difficult that those of you that can do it, well, you'd figure it out anyway. But um, if you want all four aces, you've got to get all four aces up to the top of the deck. If you just want to do three aces, which, believe it or not, is sometimes a little more believable, um, you only need three aces up to the top of the deck. Okay? So you get three aces up to the top of the deck. And um, actually, i got to be careful with what I say here. I said it was workable only with the second deal. 
If you can just do a second deal, you only need two aces up to the top of the deck. And if you get a third or a fourth one up there, just ignore them. They'll go away. So two aces up on top of the deck, and you ask for any number of hands. Okay? So they say five. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to subtract one from whatever number they give you. Five minus one is what, JB? Uh, I believe that's four. Correct. So I'm going to add four cards on top of those two aces. Okay? So that's what you do in the shuffle. And then you deal out one, two, three, four, five. You get one of the aces. And now you need a round of seconds. And you get two of the aces. Ta-da! That's pretty strong. That's a real, that's the most realistic of all the demos. And you tell them, don't even worry about what comes on the flop, turn, and river, because statistically speaking, two aces are going to outrun all these other hands anyway. Okay, now then, if you're a pretty good second dealer, and you don't mind taking a little risk, you can do the same thing when you get three aces up to the top of the deck. And it looks like this. You get three aces up to the top. Let's say they say five hands, so we add four cards on top of all three aces. You go one, two, three, four, five. And then what I do is I pull back one of the aces. Kind of hard to see, but I've pulled it back a tiny bit there. I get that up to the camera. And what I'm actually doing is a round of thirds, okay? But it feels like a second deal. I do a round of thirds, and then I deal myself the next ace. And then when it comes time to deal the burn card, notice the ace is on top, so normally that would be our burn card. But I just deal a second for the burn card, and then that ace goes right into the flop. Of course, it would be face down. You turn these over, and you finish. Hey, what do you know? I got a full house already just because I snuck one ace in there. So that demo is a little bit stronger, but it's also a little bit harder because it uses the third deal. But there's a way around that if you can do seconds and bottoms. Two aces to the top, and then before you start, cut that top ace down to the bottom of the deck. Do the exact same thing. Add four cards. The first round is fair. Then a round of seconds. And now you can deal that ace on the bottom into the flop if you want, or you know whatever you like if you're a bottom dealer. So a lot of different ways to do this. And the way I got all four of them was... I got all four aces up to the top. I cut two of the aces to the bottom of the deck before the shuffle. You said three, so I added two cards on top of my aces. One, two, three, a round of seconds. I've got the aces. Here goes a burn card, and the first ace came off the bottom into the flop, like so. And then there's a burn card and a turn and a burn card, and that last ace comes off the bottom. That was face up, so it turned itself over, but you get the idea. So if you can do seconds and bottoms, you've got a way to get all four. If you can do seconds and thirds, you can get multiple cards. If you can only do seconds, you've still got a really strong demo there with uh, getting yourself two aces from a shuffled deck of cards. Um, so there's a lot you can do with it. That's just a, a cool gambling routine that you can do. And I promise you that um, people that really play Hold'em for a living or even casually will be impressed with that. They'll understand what that means. They'll understand the uh, ramifications of being able to get yourself four aces whenever you feel like it. Um, um, the last thing I was going to talk about that I wasn't going to demo just because I'm not set up for it, which I think is great, and I've done this a couple times over the years, is let's say you want to do a little four or five trick set. Okay? I'm going to do four or five effects in a little set that's maybe 15 or 20 minutes long. What I would recommend is you take, um, take four random cards and, you know, make them a nice, uh, uh, a nice uh, uh, mixture. So a four of hearts and a seven of spades and the king of diamonds and the ace of clubs. You know, it's just, it doesn't matter. Just four random cards. And you put the work in them so that you can get to those four cards anytime you feel like it. So you sit down, you hand someone the deck cards, say, uh, please open the deck, uh, remove the jokers and advertising cards, and give those a thorough shuffle. And you do that. They do that. You take the deck back, and you immediately get those four cards up to the top of the deck. Okay? And so instantly, your four random cards are under control. 
And so now for the first trick that you do, whatever it is, you just force the top card on someone. Okay, and you do that trick, whatever that trick is, it doesn't matter. And for the second trick, you force a different one of the uh, gaffed cards on someone, and you do your second trick. And for your third trick, maybe you've got a trick that uses two cards, like uh, Devilish Miracle, the Ed Morrow, uh, Carmen D'Amico, fantastic trick, Devilish Miracle. It's one trick, but it uses two cards. Okay, so they each get one of the, uh, uh, they each get the last two gaffes. So now you've done three tricks. Everyone's had a card forced on them, but they don't know that. And for the last trick, for your fourth trick, for your closer, you're going to do a little miniature um, multiple selection routine. So you have someone shuffle up the deck again, and you cut the cards, and you get all four cards back to the top. You do a little high riffle. You peek into the riffle, and you see what the top card is, and you produce it for whoever it belongs to. Another high riffle, you see what the next card is, you produce it for that person. Another little high riffle, you uh, produce that card for that person. Now the last person's card is still on top of the deck, and maybe you end with Triumph if you haven't already done that trick. Um, and that's a great little set. You know, it's four or five tricks, depending on how you want to count it. Um, it ends with a, a nice little multiple selection, and maybe part of that is Triumph. Uh, and I tell you what, that's really, really strong. And you never once did this. You never once had to look through the deck in between tricks, which to me is the ugly part of so many other great magic routines, is that that um, culling, which, which we can't hide. I can't hide it either. I'm not suggesting to you that I know ways of culling cards secretly that you don't. I have to do that sometimes if I don't have work in the deck. But the Sub Rosa principle obviates that. You never once look through the cards as far as your spectators are concerned, you're just shuffling cards and they're just appearing out of nowhere and they don't know how. So that's something that anybody that's bought Sub Rosa can aspire to do, you know, a little routine like that. You'll have to put the tricks together your, yourself. But it's a terrific use of this principle because, um, you know, the, the spectators just don't have a chance. And incidentally, if you really wanted to get sneaky, you could have those exact same four matching cards that were not gaffed that you could then switch out and leave them with a deck that was completely ungaffed if you wanted to. So I wasn't going to mention that, but you can have that too. <laughs> uh, so hopefully during this, you guys have now seen, not just the, or heard the background on what this concept is, what it allows you to do, but now you've seen. Uh, you know, For those of you just joining us recently that didn't see Jason's first demonstration, you can scroll back in this um, video, rewind a bit, and you'll see Jason's first demonstration of controlling four aces to the top, and then the second demonstration, controlling the aces and the kings uh, to the top of the deck, and then obviously much more advanced applications here towards the end. Uh, we are out of time. There's one other thing I wanted to get to, which is just a comment contest for this episode of Expose. Uh, Kristen, you can help me with this. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to scroll through the chat uh, on Theory 11, and we're gonna scroll up, and we're going to find one person at random that just, like, don't even look at the chat, just scroll up in it, and the first username that you see uh, will be our comment contest winner that will take home... Uh, what they take? They'll take home a deck of white gold monarchs. I think someone wanted that earlier in this uh, in this episode. So I'll let you do the honors of, of picking. Who do you have? Okay. What about uh, Tech Holmes? T e k k h o l m e s. How do you spell that? T e k k h o l m e s. Okay. Tech Holmes. Tech Holmes will be the winner then. Tech. Like Sherlock Holmes, but Tech. I already made that joke. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, so that will be our winner for this episode. Uh, thank you guys for participating in the chat. Obviously, congrats on the win. But more importantly, uh, thank you guys for uh, participating, for asking questions during this. This is about, we're at about an hour right now, so we need to let Jason leave, and we need to go as well. Um, thanks to Jason for joining us, explaining this, uh, demonstrating this, which was awesome, and a lot, especially live and the pressure of that. Uh, thanks to Kristen for helping us uh, hosting this event. Andre, who's somewhere, I don't know where Andre's hiding right now, in the background, somewhere behind the table. Making another Cards Free Apple Watch video. Yes, he's making, making more karate things. Uh, and yeah, thanks to you guys again in the chat. I'm seeing the chat's going on fire right now with comments and stuff. So anyway, thank you guys for joining us. We'll definitely be doing this more soon. And Jason, thank you again for, uh, for demonstrating your wizardry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys.